coming towards you and uh, people are more demanding and people are more asking like uh, your attention. So for a lot, it's just that, especially when you work with people, it could mean that, uh, you know, you, you, um, you have a service to give there, you give that service and want something more. You know, that's very in very basic terms how Mars could be in your seventh house. When it's your relationship, it can mean that um, they are the Mars, so that someone is forcing you. Someone is saying, hey, you're not doing enough or you're doing too much, but someone is really appearing as that strong Mars. And it's up to you to negotiate. You know, I would really recommend that if you're having Mars in the seventh house, don't try to do it. I am the strongest. It's not going to work because they, they have a lot of power there in your seventh house. It's about, um, of course, it's about not letting other people step uh, on your toes and, and, and overwhelm you. But it's a lot about I'm going to put my ego aside, whether that's a big ego or a small one. I'm going to listen what they say. I'm going to say what I'm going to say, but I'm also going to try to put myself in their feet. Or how do you say that? Uh, so it's a challenging time for the Leos. But if again, if you see it in a spiritual way, people can really make their relationships uh, way better and better boundaries. It's all about boundaries for Leos, actually. Um, could also be a business partner that is really uh, irritating you and the people that you you know um, are, are in your business you, that you're working with that are uh, business partners it can really annoy you but maybe in the beginning you're saying ah oh, I had enough of it but think twice that's that's what I recommend think twice and see their perspective and then you'll be fine you you you'll um, uh, if you're single for, for you'll get you you'll get there. If you're single, it could be that you're attracting very Mars kind of people, whether you're a woman or a man. These are people who are very vi who are very um, hopefully assertive, hopefully not aggressive or arrogant, but very Mars-like. You know, they know what they want. They're going after it, and you could attract that. And um, so yeah, all very interesting. Now it could also be um, for Leo that there is some changes in the relationship when you are in a relationship to, to say the least you can't do business as usual um, when you're having this transit here so you will have to apply some changes there then for Virgo it's in the sixth house which is their house uh, Virgo um, is associated with the sixth house so I think for Virgos it's quite familiar because Virgos are known for uh, wanting to make changes, wanting to fix uh, stuff, to making things better. So you're going to feel that. It's either your work and your your day-to-day -day life or it's either your health. Whatever it is, Mars in the sixth house is very good. It, it's annoying because people don't like it when we need to fix problems. And, but Virgos are used to that. So they will say, what's the problem here? Want to fix it and take your time, Virgos. You could be way more efficient after that period of August uh, when it becomes September time, way more sufficient in the way that you live your life. And that's what Virgos want. They want to get more efficient and not work harder, but smarter, that kind of thing. And um, for other people, it could be the hell that they're, it's a good time for Virgos to make some big changes when it comes to improving your health and that, that demands some kind of a willpower. So if you're saying, oh, I've been wanting to do those exercises, not really going forward, maybe when after, hopefully after uh, August time, you will see like I'm having this program here that I'm doing uh, three times a week, doing fitness, whatever, and I'm sticking to it and it's really rewarding, that kind of thing. When you're having an issue like a disease or an illness and um, it could demand a lot of energy of you, with Mars there in the sixth, but on the at the so that's annoying, of course, because no one wants to have pain and no one wants to, you know, feel bad. But the thing is, because of the willpower, Mars in in the sixth houses is is not that bad. Um, a lot of people think oh, it's bad. Yeah, it's 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 not fun, of course. But after that, Mars goes direct again. Your health could be really, really, really better because of the. Um, the extras that you did before. So if, if you want to tackle a disease, if you want to tackle uh, an illness, it could be quite quite good. 
Um, but again, it, 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 it demands time and it demands effort. So, what else? Um, Mars in the fifth house for the Librans. I, I, am I correct? Mars in the fifth house for the Librans? Um, yes, I'm correct on that. Yes, this is fun. This is fun. This is fun. This could be really, really fun for you Librans. And especially the ones who have Libra planets at the very end of Libra. Um, uh, because, you know, a Libran wants to have, uh, it's always important that they want to have their peace. And when Mars goes retrograde in a sign, you know, at the beginning of um, uh, Aquarius, that I, I, and when you're having planets at the beginning of Libra, it goes very well, it goes very smoothly, it means that maybe you're taking a, a hobby that you've done long before, you're gonna do it again, that hobby, and it takes some time to readjust, readjust, or it could be a creative project, it could be also children, that uh, your child is acting very Mars-like, and it, it's taking quite a, a lot of time to um, understand that and to, to change your focus, to change something about the relationship with your child in order, to, um, in order for your child to be more uh, in line and, and assertive. And as well, it could mean that you need to change your relationship with your child. Maybe a bit stricter boundaries or a bit more loosening up. Nowadays, it's more a bit stricting the boundaries, I, I, I assume. But whatever it is, in general, it's not a bad transit. Uh, it could also mean that, you know, romance, that someone is coming into your life again, someone that you knew. And, um, you know, it's, it's, a, it's a very sexual thing as well. You know, Mars in the fifth house, sex, sexuality. And it could be really um, liberating you in some sort of way, because Uranus is in there. So quite nice for uh, the Librans, but in general, it could be just a project or a hobby or something that you start. Starting your own business as well. Starting your own business. Um, yeah, absolutely, because the fifth house is, is also starting your own creative project, your own business. Now Mars and the fourth for the Scorpios. Again, Scorpio, one of those signs, very, very important. Um, and it goes retrograde, Mars is your ruler. And um, so that could be property, property, that could be family, that could be your emotional well-being. Um, there is a lot of activity there. So when Mars goes retrograde in your fourth house, you could be rearranging the house. You could be doing lots of activities at home, working at home, or really um, renovating or doing small changes in the home. It's a really, really good time for that. But being active there could also be a problem with a family member, a parent uh, that is coming up and th th there is a bit of tension there. Hopefully you can smooth it out when uh, Mars goes direct again at the end of August. So it's demanding lots of time there. It's, it's really not a time for you Scorpios to be very relaxed at home, I think. So, um, but rethink what you can do to improve your emotional well-being. And for a lot of people, it's having a home. It's having that, that kind of place where you can rest. And yes, you will be able to do that, but you will, you will have to make some changes. Could also be a parent, as I said, the relationship with a parent. There need to be put a bit more boundaries there or a little bit less, um, whatever uh, the situation is for you could also be property that you're buying houses, selling houses. Again, uh, when that is the case, buying or selling after Mars goes direct again is better. Then Mars in the third house for, uh, is that Sagittarius? Yes, yeah, Sagittarius, that is great. That is, well, great in general. Um, because the third house is Aquarius, it's, it's a fa you know, Aquarius and Sagittarius goes very well together. So it could be that you're learning something new, learning a skill that you once learned, but you, you um, have forgotten all about it and you're relearning that in that period because the third house is what you learn, skills, it's a very mental house. So the way that you think can be totally, totally different. Um, and that's good news. It could mean that a, an attitude of thinking, you let go of it and, and make place for a new one. 
um, whatever that is for you. Could also be fighting a, a bit with, with a sibling there or with people, uh, neighbors. Could be that, that some tension comes up or whatever it is, that tension needs to come up so you can fix it. That's the purpose of, of that Mars there. When you're traveling, uh, be aware, um, some short trips and so on, be aware that it could be, mean that there is some uh, uh, slowing down of the travel because of uh, the Mars retrograde. Um, maybe computers are slower than they used to do. Uh, make your backups, uh, put some important information on sticks or whatever, uh, because the third house is also, you know, our interactions, our communication. So the way that it could mean that you are communicating way too strongly or you're communicating way too softly and you need to change that. It could be as simple as that for you uh, Sagittarians. Then the second house for um, uh, Capricorn. So um, that is finances for a lot of you. Could be that um, your financial situation, it needs to change uh, and, and you're going to, to um, to tackle that and it's a good time to tackle that with Mars there and Aquarius uh, Capricorns normally are quite good with with um, you know strategic planning and so on but um, if there is some problem that you've been you know not attacking for way too long it could pop up that um, your financial situation it's a good time to improve your financial situation to make it stronger to make it more secure but first, there might be a problem. Um, so there might be a lot of activity there, lots of money out, lots of money in, but try to be as as, uh, um, as stabilizing as possible. That um, on another level itself, word of course, so a lot of Capricorns could be challenged now to look at their self-worth and to work on that. Because I see a lot of clients, you know, they're having some stuff going on in the second house and their self-worth is not good. But knowing it is one thing, doing something about it is another thing. And that's by actively you doing something. You can consult, you can ask for help, but basically you got to do it yourself. When Mars is in the second house, you got to Google, how can I improve myself? Uh, um, confidence, for instance, Just as simple as that. And then do some simple actions and you've got really the opportunity now you Capricorns to do so and to improve the self-love and uh, to improve that your talents basically to see that your talents for what they are and to work with them and to to become a stronger person it's really nice to have Mars in the second house for that reason and last but not least dear Aquarians well it's not least um Aquarius it's happening oh I, I seem to have forgotten uh, Pisces, but I'll see in a minute. Mars in, in, in the first house is, um, of course, in Aquarius for you. Everything that I said in the beginning of the video, it, it's applicable for you. So you got the, uh, it's, and especially when you've got planets between zero and 10 degrees of Aquarius, your life is changing here. And um, so it depends on you. Are you someone who is very strong and will powered? when it comes to taking actions for your life you might the universe might say to you mm, slow down a little bit and that has a reason so do slow down also when it comes to physical um uh, your physical strength when you feel that you're having inflammations that you're having problems slow down slow down that's the universe and that's your body actually the body is the mind talking to you and saying slow down please uh, so, um, so don't forget to do that. Don't do like me. Like when I had Mars in my first house, I just kept on going. You know, I kept on going, kept on going until, you know, I was in so much pain and I had to stop. Don't, don't wait for your body that it has to take over. Be smart and say, okay, I have to realign my, my life basically, because it's your life path, the first house. When you are someone who has too less of a willpower. Mars in the first house, you know, is really saying, come on, 
um, you, you have to go forwards now and you will feel more of that irritation and use that irritation to go forwards to say no I have to say no to this person or that person I have to show what I want and therefore it's a very good time for you, you Aquarius so it depends on your temperament um, and sometimes at certain levels of our uh, areas of our life we're more will powered than in other areas of our life it, 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 it all depends you know, you can be very willpower person at work and then at home, you know, uh, you can't even say uh, no to your loved one, for instance. So it all depends. But a very interesting time for you Aquarians. Mind your health. Mind your health. Listen to your body. Then you cannot go wrong. Um, of course, things happen as they, as they have to happen. But mind your body. Listen to your body. And, um, and then I think... A lot of Aquarians will be able to free themselves up in, a, in, in lots of certain situations. You know, they're, they're, it's their life, basically. It, it's uh, all the key areas of your life. And then last but not least, um, uh, for uh, the Pisces, it's happening in their 12th house, which is not an easy house. Mars having in the 12th there, it's, a, it's very psychological and introspective. So again, not a lot of people will see what you're doing there because the 12th house is all behind the scenes. So in a good way, you can use it as preparing yourself after, um, you know, when the 10th of October and then Mars will be coming into your sign after that, you're going to be thriving, you know, when you do your best when Mars is in the 12th house. What is that? Well, it's introspective. It's spotting your blind spots. The 12th house, we all have blind spots. Don't, if people are, um, which is a universe, you know, you could say, if people are really saying things to you, don't put your head in the sand. Try to listen, try to take it in. And it's a good time to tackle addictions. It's a good time to tackle those blind spots because it's Mars after all, and it wants to fix it. Um, so if you're if you're having some sort of sort of addiction, it's a good time to tackle it. It will take some time, but um, it's a good time to tackle your blind spots. It's a good time to be inward, retrospective, and then when go, Mars goes direct, you feel like uh, you're you can shift things. It's a bit restless, so don't expect for the, for the um, sometimes it can mean a lot of dreaming or a lot of being active in your sleep, so to speak. Uh, it could be a bit less energized, feeling less energized because of Mars in the 12th house. Um, but again, uh, it's there to, it's a subconscious house. And the more you are aware of, of what's going on in your subconscious world, the more you will be, the better you will be able to tackle it. And uh, on another level, it could mean that you're preparing something. Uh, you were preparing some new new things happening for you and you're doing that behind the scenes or you're for investigation for um people who work on projects behind the scenes it's fantastic you're writing a book for instance with that mars there in the 12th house and it's in aquarius so it might be very mind-blowing or uh, aquarius is a sign which is all about the unusual against the mainstream it wants to reform so um, that was a long video and I hope it was useful um, thank you very much for watching if you made it till the end of the video bravo thank you very much do subscribe do share these videos and again if you want to see it for yourself personally and there's really some problem that you're having get in touch I hope I can uh, um, all hear from you. Having said that, make the best out of it. Have a very good Mars retrograde and see you soon. Bye-bye.